until you change your company, you don't affect your identity. The things that we have seen all around the world are connectable and traceable to the company that God has helped us. Welcome to Apostle TV. The message you're about to watch will definitely transform your life. Be blessed as you watch. Very, very briefly, we shall be having as our focus first to understand the place of the mind in life's battles. Second, we shall be looking at examples of people who lost because of the mind. Third, so we shall understand the place of the mind in life's battles. We shall see examples of people who lost because of the mind. Thirdly, we shall see examples of people who won and ruled because of the mind. And then, fourthly, we shall look at the impact on, of the mind on life generally. And finally, we shall see what to do with the mind. Hallelujah. I want to give the Lord the praise and thank my father for the privilege of standing here this morning. I do not take this privilege for granted at all. And I appreciate God for the privilege of being raised. It is fully confirmed that spiritual covering determines destiny coverage. The extent to which your destiny will cover is determined by the covering spirituality that you have. It is also confirmed that company affects identity. You can identify a person by the company they keep. And I'm amazed and surprised and excited in God at the impact of this company on our lives. God's servant, Pastor David, preached yesterday and shared many things with you about the impact on his life. Very quickly, we are speaking on the mind, the battlefield of the redeemed. The mind as the battlefield of the redeemed. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 3, all the way to verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, all the way to verse 5. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of imaginations, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now we are approaching, as we approach this season of gross darkness, an economic holocaust on the face of the earth, one of the places that require very serious attention is the mind of the believer. The mind of the believer. The mind of the believer has the capacity to make a person either to be a victim of the hard times or to be a victor in the hard times. Why is the mind so important? Three or four reasons. First, the mind is the battlefield of the redeemed. The mind is the battlefield of the redeemed. For so, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Number two, battles may be fought with weapons, but they are won from the mind. Battles may be fought with weapons, but they are won with strategy, which is a child of the mind. Third, life is lived inside out, not outside in. It's lived from the inside out. The meaning is, you cannot win in the mind and lose in life. And you cannot lose in the mind and win in life. It's impossible. You can't win, you can't win in the mind and lose in life. And you cannot lose in the mind and win in life. Fourthly, the state of the mind affects the state of life. That is why a madman is practically useless to society. Why? Because the mind is gone. The state of the mind affects the state of life. That's why he said, guard your heart with all diligence. 
For out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 23. And finally, number five. The most critical target of enemy confrontation is the mind. Enemy confrontation. Confrontation with unscriptural imaginations. Confrontations with ideas that exalt themselves above the world. Confrontations from rebellious thoughts. But I announce today in the name that is above every name. Someone here, you will win the victory over the mind. If you are saying amen, say a louder amen. If you are saying amen, shout the louder believer, say amen. amen. While speaking with our father yesterday, he said, if you don't cast down imaginations, imaginations will cast you down. If you don't bring your thought into captivity, we just had an elaborate preaching just now, your thought will bring you into captivity. But I decree, you will not enter into that captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have seen, been to countries and seen presidents of nations and the whole cabinet coming for meetings, submitting to the authority of Jesus. We have mayors of cities coming for, the, for services, bowing for prayer, mayor in Leeds, mayor in Houston, Texas, and so on and so forth. We have nations of the world coming in for conferences and meetings. Last meeting we had about 50 something countries represented and some of them came here with us for this conference and we see the spiritual lineage and the spiritual tree reproducing and multiplying all over the world. I prophesy to you today, in your own life, you shall see multiplications and replications. If you are saying amen, you say a louder amen. You shall see multiplications and replications. Somebody shout the loudest amen. If you would like to give your life to Jesus, or you have given your life to Jesus before, but something happened and you took it back, can I give you an opportunity to return to Jesus? The truth is that if you are not in Christ, you are in crisis. Why not pray this simple prayer with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for sending me your word. I return to you today. I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. I surrender to you. From today, write my name in the book of life and cleanse my name from the book of death. Give me grace to serve you and to follow you all the days of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen.